Thanks to some savvy scientists at the University of East London, one of the world's sweetest crops can now be used to make a form of concrete. They call it sugarcrete. We started working with our students under a very determined agenda on looking for uh, alternatives to construction materials, to high energy and high carbon construction materials. Arma Gutierrez and his team were looking for ways to make an ultra low carbon building material and find one solution for the construction industry, responsible for about a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions. It starts with this irregular stock of sugarcane, and when it's harvested, it leaves these leftovers, this fibrous material which is the main ingredient in this new cleaner form of concrete. I had a chance to see how it's made up close. You have bagasse, which is the sugarcane waste. Uh, this one in particular is from India, one of our partners. So you can see how simple it is to make this, literally with just a few ingredients. The idea is that you could make this in any village around the world. No advanced science degree needed for this. The technology that you need to fabricate it is very simple. It's just hydraulic press and a mixer, which you can very easily install in rural areas. They require very little energy and can be operated with one or two unskilled labor. They could benefit local inhabitants by providing them with construction materials for their own houses, but also as a way of uh, creating some income for them. Because India is one of the top three producers of sugarcane, and thanks to help from local partners, they're able to produce roughly 400 bricks of sugarcrete each day. Builders are just finishing up one-of-a-kind classrooms. We are building the walls of one school room that are going to be made with the material, and then we are going to monitor the performance of that room over a year time and see how the performance is different from a traditional concrete or brick building. The team needed to make sure that sugarcrete is as durable, if not more, than concrete. So how much pressure are you pressure testing this cube with right now? At the moment, uh, we are on one kilonewton. Unlike concrete, sugarcrete allows moisture and vapor to transfer through it, meaning no mold. And it's flexible, so you don't need movement joints. In concrete, when you apply the pressure and when the cracks appear in the material, the material fails, it basically crumbles and, and totally fails. With sugarcrete, the fibers within the sugarcane bagasse, they keep the material together. Why is sugarcrete better for the climate than regular concrete? The energy that it takes to make it, uh, and then it's also to do with the way the material behaves over time in terms of carbon. Concrete is one of the most used products on Earth, pumping more than 4 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the air every day. Within two years, I reckon we could be having a significant amount of people making sugarcrete around the world. Would you live in a house built out of sugarcrete? I would love to. And NBC News' Josh Letterman joins us now. Fascinating story, Josh. Uh, I have to admit, the first question I had when I was watching this is, can you eat it? <laughs> can you eat it? <laughs> probably not. I don't think it would taste very good. It probably wouldn't uh, do very well in your bodily system either. Uh, but it certainly is a, a promising solution for climate change, one that folks are really excited about, Gotti. Yeah, a very sweet solution. So let's say that you were able to scale this up in every country where sugarcane is mass produced. How much of a, a change could this do to the fight against climate change? It could be big because, you know, Gadi, when we talk about climate change, we often talk about the more obvious sources of greenhouse gas emissions, things like what's coming out of our tailpipe of our car or uh, power plants. And those are important, but we don't often focus on things like heavy manufacturing and industry, which make up about a quarter of our greenhouse gas emissions. And the thing is, they're actually much harder to deal with than things like uh, electricity and our cars. Because if you take a car, for example, you can fairly straightforward switch your vehicle to being an electric vehicle. And then if that electricity is derived from renewable sources like wind or solar, you essentially have something that's net zero. It's not contributing to climate change. But when it comes to things like concrete, it's way harder. For example, when you make concrete, you have to heat limestone to really, really high temperatures. First of all, making all of that heat 
requires carbon emissions. And then the process of heating it to create the precursor to concrete also releases huge amounts of greenhouse gases. And so with something like sugarcrete, you only have about a one fifth the amount of greenhouse gas emissions coming from that process. It's not a panacea. It's not going to be a cure all. But scientists tell us that if we add all of these little solutions together to try to reduce the carbons from all the things that we do in our daily lives, that is what ultimately is going to put us on a path to a more sustainable future, Gotti. I love it. Sugar cubes that you can't eat, but you may be able to live in. Very, very cool. Josh, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.